Sciatic pain is one of the worst types of chronic pain I think I've ever dealt with on a recurring basis. I used to get sciatic pain a lot uh, for years and years, on and off. And when it would flare up, I remember feeling helpless, like there was nothing I could do, there was no position I could put myself in that would help. Well, guess what? There are things you can do to find relief. I've made other videos on this topic because I think it's so important and in this video, I show you the stretches and the exercises that have helped me personally overcoming my own sciatic pain and I'm excited to share them with you. I think it's really important to understand what the sciatic nerve is and where it is. Uh, what sciatic pain feels like, which if you're watching this video, I probably don't have to explain that much. And uh, what are some of the common causes of sciatic pain? And this is really important because what is causing it will determine what type of stretch and exercise is most eff effective at relieving it. So the sciatic nerve is actually three nerves that run down the spine and are bundled together at the base of the spine they come through the pelvis, running underneath a muscle called the piriformis. Now, this is very important. We're going to come back to that. The piriformis is up by the glute. After the sciatic nerve runs under the piriformis, it goes all the way down the back of the leg. What does sciatic pain feel like? Well, I'm sure you know. It feels like pain originating in the low back or the hips or the butt radiating down one or both of the legs. Uh, what are some of the common causes? Now, this is really important. Two of the most common causes are a bulging disc or something called piriformis syndrome. Remember that muscle I talked about? So I'm gonna explain both of these and the exercises and stretches that I'll show you today are most effective when one or both of these are your issue causing your sciatic pain. Now there are other things that can cause sciatic pain too. And if you've never had your problem looked at by a medical professional, it's probably a good idea because that will determine which exercise and stretch is most appropriate. So uh, let's talk about bulging discs first as the cause of sciatic pain. Now with bulging discs, there is a spectrum, right? On one side of the spectrum, there's a chronic situation where over time, due to poor posture, due to hunching over, due to sitting all day at a desk, you've compressed or pinched the front part of the disc and the back part of the disc has gotten weak and bulged out, pressing on some of the nerves running down the spine. And if those are the sciatic nerves that get bundled and go down the leg, well, guess what? That's where you're gonna feel the pain, even though the problem is up here in one of the discs. Now, on the other end of that spectrum is an acute injury situation where I've bent over maybe to pick up something that's too heavy and uh, now I've ruptured or herniated a disc and that's an acute injury situation. Look, folks, if that's you, you need to see a doctor. I'm addressing chronic issues, so just use common sense here, okay? All right. So first I'll show you uh, some of the remedies for sciatic pain due to a bulging disc. And guess what? If the problem was caused by hunching over for long periods of time, what do you think the solution is? Ah, back bends, gentle back bends. Here are three of my favorites and I think you'll find a lot of relief here. Okay, if your sciatic pain is due to a bulging disc, then here are three variations of a gentle back bend that should give you some relief. Now, each one of these is increasing in intensity, so choose the one that is most appropriate for you, and I'll show you the gentlest one first. It's called 
Sphinx pose. So Sphinx pose, you come to your belly, push down with the pubic bone, and push down gently through the tops of your feet. Stack the elbows underneath the shoulders. Now with all of these folks, it's really important that you lengthen and open. We're not just pushing back and pinching the low back. That's at, that will actually make the problem worse. What we wanna do is grip the mat, push down through the elbows, the forearms, and the finger pads, and then pull towards you as if you're gripping the mat, pulling the whole mat towards you, pushing your heart forward. As you do this, you're gonna feel more space. You're gonna feel decompression in the spine. You'll feel like the heart is moving forward, the shoulders are moving back, and then it's a push back. But by that time, you have more space in the vertebrae to accept that. Doing this, take about three breaths here, and then after your three breaths, you come down, you take a moment, rest, and you come back, and again, grip the mat, pull the heart, or pull the mat towards you, push the heart forward, draw the shoulders back, and push back gently. Doing this reverses all of that slouching, that sitting, and it moves the disc material back in the middle of the vertebrae over time, which is where you want it. Do uh, three to five of these, three breaths each, and yeah, that's version number one. Version number two, taking it up in intensity just a little bit, is cobra pose. So now we slide the hands back where the palms of the hands, the heels of the hands, are near the low ribs, keeping the elbows close to the sides, push into the mat, and again, we're gonna grip the mat and pull the mat towards you, push the heart forward, draw the shoulders back to open through the upper back, and then we can get a little bit higher here, a little bit more of a back bend, which is more effective, but more intense, right? So if this is too much pain for you, go back to the first version. Three breaths, come down, take a moment, doo -doo -doo, and then come back and do another three breaths, three to five of these. Really open up the upper back here by pulling the hands towards you, pushing the heart forward. Okay, the next one is from Cobra, King Cobra or Seal Pose. So from here, again, you're just gonna begin to straighten the arms, but keep pulling the mat towards you, pushing the heart forward, drawing the shoulders back. Now, even with the arms straight here, I can still pull the mat towards me, draw the shoulders back and open up the heart. So again, if this is available to you, really, really great and effective. If it's too much, go back to one of the others. And same thing here, uh, three breaths, three to five reps. And then when you're done, come down, take a little rest, bend the knees, wash the feet back and forth to just give your low back a little sweet relief here. If uh, bulging disc is your sciatic pain issue, then I really feel like these are gonna help you over time. Do these every day. Um, listen to your body. This is the most important thing. You never wanna push yourself past pain threshold. Some of these are gonna feel uncomfortable, especially if you're in the midst of a lot of sciatic pain right now. Take it easy, take it slow, listen to your body, and over time, you're gonna find some relief. Okay, so what if your sciatic pain is not due to a bulging disc, but it's due to something called piriformis syndrome? What is piriformis syndrome? Well, remember that muscle that I talked to you about, the piriformis that wraps from the sacrum all the way around the outside of the hip to the top of the femur bone. Well, the sciatic nerve passes right underneath that, and when the piriformis gets tight and aggravated and weak, well, it presses on that sciatic nerve and it causes all kinds of misery for you. So what causes piriformis syndrome? You're not gonna like this, it's sitting. Sitting a lot causes the piriformis to become really contracted and tight and weak, and in turn, it puts pressure on the sciatic nerve. So if you sit a lot at a desk, at a computer, 
at uh, in a car, <laughs> which pretty much describes almost everyone, then you're prone to piriformis syndrome, which is why it's so common, right? So the remedy for piriformis syndrome sciatic pain is threefold. One is a targeted pressure point self-massage using a foam roller and a tennis ball. Secondly, you want to stretch that piriformis, and I've got some stretches to show you. And thirdly, you want to strengthen the piriformis. So all three of these things go together. Strengthening is really important because that relieves tension. It makes the muscle stronger and less prone to become contracted and tight when we sit, which we're gonna sit, right? So the stronger your piriformis is, the more resilient it becomes uh, to this syndrome when we sit. Okay, first, uh, foam roller. So the foam roller is a little bit less intense than the tennis ball. Obviously the tennis ball is small, so it really gets in there and digs in there. Um, I'll show you the foam roller first. A note about self-massage, if you're dealing with some really painful uh, sciatic pain right now, then self-massage may be a little bit too intense because think about it. If your piriformis is already tight and it's pressing on the sciatic nerve, well, in order to get the knots out and release the tension of that piriformis, we're gonna get in there and press even more, which is going to press on your sciatic nerve. So you may feel this, uh, increase the symptoms a little bit. Now you need to listen to your body. If it's too much, skip this part and go right to the stretching, go right to the strengthening. And then after the pain is reduced to an acceptable level, then you can come back to self-massage, okay? Listen to your body, it's really important. Okay, so foam roller. Now you can get a foam roller pretty much anywhere, you just want it to be firm, not squishy. So something that's gonna support your body weight with just a little bit of give, okay? Now, assuming that the problem is on your right side, we're going to uh, lay on the foam roller, and I like to start with a straight right leg and a bent left leg, and I come down to my right elbow, I'm just gonna roll around in there, finding those trigger points, finding those knots, finding the sensation. And then once I find it, I can just close my eyes, kind of roll side to side, really get in there, and then let the body weight and the pressure point do, do its work. Over time, you'll feel a little bit of release. Again, if it's too intense, skip this whole self-massage idea for now and go to the stretches. Um, do this for a couple minutes here. And then if you're able, and really get around, you'll have to look for the spots, right? So roll from side to side, roll back and forth, and find those spots of sensation. If you're able, you can take it up in intensity just a little bit by bringing the right ankle to the left thigh. Ooh, right away, I feel that because now we're stretching the piriformis, right? We're externally rotating the hip. So from here, again, start rolling around. The intensity becomes a little bit more. I can feel that piriformis now is, is being stretched and we're pressing in on it. Roll around, find those pressure points. Once you find a good spot, stay, close your eyes, breathe, relax, and let those points release, okay? And again, you can come up to your hands as well and kind of roll side to side. You are going to find your own spots here. Everybody will be a little bit different. That's the foam roller. If you wanna take it up in intensity a little bit, tennis ball or a lacrosse ball or a, even a softball. Softball is a little bit bigger, so a little bit less intense. And I'm going to start with the tennis ball there. I like to get up on my hands first here and roll around a little bit with both legs bent, maybe this right leg a little bit straighter. Find the spots. And then I like to come down to my right elbow. Breathe relax, 
Let the, <laughs> let the sensation and the trigger point release. Listen to your body. If it's too much, lessen the pressure or come out. And then after you kind of roll around here with the straight leg, again, you can do the same thing here by coming to a figure four leg position, right ankle to the left thigh, and then rolling around here. This is pretty intense, right? You're really gonna feel this. Even if you're not dealing with active sciatic pain, this is intense. There's a lot of sensation here, so breathe through it relax, but it's super effective at working out knots in the piriformis, getting in there with those trigger points and releasing tension in that muscle. Okay, so the second part of our three-part remedy for sciatic pain due to piriformis syndrome is stretching. And why am I in my dining room? Well, we're gonna use the dining room table as a prop, as a stretch prop. So I find the height of a dining room table is just about um, perfect for this. And this stretch is super effective at stretching the piriformis. And I feel like it's accessible for most people too. So you're gonna want a cushion or a blanket to give your ankle and shin a little bit of cushion on top of the table. So place that up on top of the table. And then whatever side your sciatic pain is bothering you on, that's the leg that's gonna go up on the table. And you're going to sweep it up there in this figure four kind of position. So it's an external rotation of the hip doing that stretches the piriformis. We're laying the shin, the outside of the shin down on the table. The side of the foot is on the table and the foot is flexed here, okay? Now, the idea here is we're gonna fold forward, but we're not gonna round through our upper back. Rounding through the upper back doesn't really do anything. Remember, we're trying to stretch the piriformis here, so hinging from the hip is gonna do that. So we need to keep a long, straight spine. So lift up through the heart, lift up through the crown of the head, support yourself with your hands on the table, and then leading with your heart, keeping a long spine, begin to bend forward. And you can walk the hands forward a little bit here. Breathe, relax right away. You're gonna feel it, right? A nice stretch on the outside of the, the left hip, which is your piriformis stretching. So breathe through it, find a place of sensation, maybe stay there. Relax into it, and maybe that's where you stay, or maybe you can keep on finding space, keep on going, and then just fold uh, until you feel the appropriate level of sensation here. Once you do, hang out there for maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, even more. I find this feels so good. It's intense, you feel the sensation, but to me, it, um, it's a good kind of sensation, okay? Of course, it depends how bad your sciatica is, right? And then when you're done, come on up nice and easy, and then support the leg with your hand as you, as you take it down. And there you go. That's one stretch. I'm going to show you one more that I think is, is equally as effective. Okay, this last stretch is another version of that figure four leg shape where you're externally rotating the hip. But this time, we're going to use the wall as a prop. And this is super effective. And again, I think it's pretty accessible for most people. So you're going to want to get your sit bones right up against the wall. I think the best way to do that is to sit sideways. Put the sides of your hips snugly against the wall and then sweep your legs all the way up. From here you can shimmy a little bit closer until you feel your butt, your sit bones pressing against the wall. Just hanging out here with the legs against the wall and the low back pressing into the earth is really great relief I've found uh, when I have those um, sciatic flare-ups when I had them. So just hanging out here with the legs up the wall, breathing, relaxing, can be a great relief. Then if you wanna take it into a stretch, the side that you feel um, the sciatic pain on, so let's say it's the left side, that's the leg we're going to bend. So place the left ankle on top of that right thigh, flex the left foot. That helps to protect the knee here. 
and then we're gonna start bending this right knee, which draws the left shin toward the chest, which stretches the piriformis, but the most important thing here is to keep the low back pressing against the ground. You'll find that the butt wants to lift off. You're going to use the wall to press this foot into the wall and push the low back down, okay? So I'm gonna start bending this right knee. Now right away, you see my low back coming off the wall. I'm gonna press the right foot into the wall, push the low back down, ooh, and now I feel immediately that stretch in the piriformis. Hang out here, you can support and stabilize the legs and the shin with your arms and your hands. And then just keep on bending this right knee little by little. Each time you feel the low back lift, push the right foot into the wall, push the low back down into the ground. Breathe and relax. Take a good minute, two minutes here. Really soak it up. This is such a good piriformis stretch. And then um, once you're done, straighten this leg. Take both legs up the wall. And just to balance things out, you should do the other side as well. Same thing on that last table stretch. You want to do both sides. Keep yourself balanced. Uh, and um, same thing on this side, right? You start bending this left knee, you press the left foot into the ground to push the low back down. Hang out there for a good couple minutes, and then swing the legs down, and there you go. Those are the stretches that I've found really super effective at uh, lengthening and opening and releasing tension of the piriformis, relieving sciatica pain due to piriformis syndrome. One more thing we're gonna talk about here, strengthening. So the last piece of our three-part remedy for uh, sciatic pain due to piriformis syndrome is strengthening. Now strengthening is a super important part of this equation because when you strengthen your piriformis, it becomes more supple, less tense, and more resilient. So that when you do sit for long periods of time, and let's face it, you're going to sit, uh, the muscle is more resilient and it won't react in the same aggravated, tight, tense way. It will allow you to function and not give you sciatic pain all the time. Wouldn't that be nice? So this exercise is a really great way to strengthen your piriformis. Now the piriformis is an external rotator muscle of the hip. So how do we strengthen it? By externally rotating the hip. And this is a great way to do it. Uh, there's fancy names for this exercise, but I like fire hydrant um, <laughs> because, well, you'll see why it's called fire hydrant. We come to a tabletop position, wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips, and then keeping the integrity of the 90 degree bend in the hip and the 90 degree bend in the knee, we're just going to open up that hip all the way to bring, bring the knee up to 90 degrees and then back down. All the way up and all the way back down and let's go to 10. So that's three, moving nice and slow with control. Four and five and you're already beginning to feel it, right? If you've never done these before, it's surprising how <laughs> how weak the darn piriformis is. That's seven, three more. Nice and slow, that's eight. Nine, really lift the knee all the way up to the 90 degree position. And then one more, take it up and come down. And again, to balance yourself out, do the other side. That'll keep the musculature and everything balanced. Really, really great way, again, to strengthen the piriformis and keep it happy and keep it uh, from giving you problems.
If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy my teaching, then please subscribe to my channel and check out my Patreon site. The link is below in the video description. It's a way for you to support the making of these videos, which I really appreciate, and it gives you access to special live stream events. We just had one of these this past Sunday morning. It was tea time with David. So we got to hang out together virtually, uh, drink some tea, talk about health and wellness, and I answer your questions. Questions. Super fun. I uh, hope to see you at the next one. If you would like a nice sweet flow practice right now, you're feeling a little bit limber, then go ahead and click the flow practice next to me. Love you so much. Thank you.